All right, let's get started. Um, thank you all for joining us today. This is a study abroad for International Institute majors and minors webinar. You are currently in listen mode only. You should now be able to hear me. Uh, the chat function is disabled. However, at the end of the session, uh, you'll be able to submit any questions that you may have. This webinar will be recorded and available with captioning um, about one to two days after the session on our on-demand section of our ieo.ucla.edu GLOW page on our website. Like I mentioned, we will get to questions at the end of our webinar, so feel free to type uh, questions as we go along in the Q&A box. Okay, so my name is Maureen Atala from the UCLA International Education Office, and we are a one-stop shop for undergraduate study abroad opportunities. At our office, you can consult with our study abroad advisors, coordinators, and we can connect you with peers who have studied abroad themselves. Today, I'll be leading this webinar alongside Sandy and Magda from the International Institute as part of our GLOW Week. Okay, these are our agenda items for this webinar. <clears throat> we'll just finish the welcome. I'll discuss COVID. We'll go through some study abroad one-on-one -on -one refreshers, major requirements, sample programs, and Q&A at the end of the session. Okay, so study abroad in COVID-19. I'm sure this is on everybody's mind. Um, how can it not be, right? <laughs> um, so I just like to mention that we are uh, planning for summer 2021 programs, and currently they are scheduled to run. Um, the UCLA Study Abroad Office is monitoring world events and continuously assessing the safety of our programs for our students and faculty abroad. Program tra travel decisions will be made by late winter or early spring quarter. As you know, developments are made at that time, we will make decisions um, then if uh, something is not, or location is not safe to travel. Our coordinators are developing virtual altern alternatives should in-person fall through for UCLA's faculty-led programs. We're working in an ever-changing environment. Uh, more than ever, students who desire to study abroad in the near future will need to be flexible as factors are sometimes outside of our, out, our control and may change uh, unexpectedly. One of the most important things that I can mention today is uh, apply, apply, apply for your passport as soon as possible. Uh, we know the Department of State has an extensive backlog of passport applications. It's currently taking longer than the usual six to eight weeks processing window. So we strongly encourage you to apply for or renew your passport now or ASAP. A handful of programs will require students to secure a student or visitor visa before departure to enter certain countries. This may require students to have a passport well before their departure date. So we've asked students to first view the Study Abroad 101 webinar. Um, we hope that most of you have watched that webinar. Uh, this this webinar is intended to complement the 101 webinar from a topic specific focus. If you've missed it, please do look over that recording on our GLOW website, but here are some refreshers. Um, in the 101, we cover topics like types of different programs available to UCLA, how credits transfer to UCLA from uh, specific programs, satisfying those requirements, the costs of those programs and funding opportunities like financial aid and the application process and timeline. This session will focus largely on major guidelines and we will highlight specific programs that meet the theme of our session and conclude with the Q&A session at the end. So briefly, I'd just like to discuss some of the different program types that we do have. We have the traditional university immersion where students can study at a local university with local students and other UC peers. We have UCLA faculty-led programs, which I'll discuss uh, 
the specific programs that we can we will offer um, at the end of the, the this presentation. Those are three to five week long summer programs with a UCLA professor. And we have intern and research abroad opportunities. These are our new models of studying abroad. We have a cohort where you can study abroad with a cohort of local and host university students. And that entire cohort would come back to UCLA for summer session C. And we have UC center programs as well. Financial aid. So can I use my UCLA financial aid for a study abroad program? Yes, eligible students can use UCLA financial aid to cover the costs of those programs. That can be comprised of grants, loans, scholarships. We have many scholarships uh, available to you. Please look over our website and it'll list um, all different types of scholarships that you can apply for. We have some grant funding limited uh, for summer programs. And generally the requirement is to take a minimum of eight units. Before continuing as part of our Glow Week, we're hosting a keyword a scavenger hunt each day this week for a chance to win a, a $75 gift card. Today's keyword of the day is Matsuri. Please visit our event homepage, ieo.ucla.edu backslash glow to submit the keyword by end of day today and enter a chance to win today's prize. Okay, now I would like to hand it off to Sandy who will review requirements for your majors. Hi everyone. So many of you who are thinking about travel, doing study abroad through EAP or to travel study, um, a lot of times don't know where to start. So we usually advise students, the first step is reviewing your remaining requirements. So if you run a degree audit report, which you, most of you know how to do, you will see what requirements you're missing. So you might be missing GE requirements, major, minor, maybe foreign language, or if you just need upper division units. So based on that, depending on which requirements you want to fulfill abroad, that is how you start your search on which programs you want to do. So let's say you want to fulfill foreign language uh, requirements. You will look for a program that is offering foreign language to the level of language that you're looking for. Uh, the same for major or minor requirements. Now, step two. Next slide. Yeah, so step two, um, on our website, uh, we have, so if you go to either Ideas, Global Studies, Global Health, International and Area Studies website, you can uh, click on current students and then go to the study abroad link or uh, tab, you will find a database that looks like this. So this is for EAP courses um, programs only. So what we've done is we've selected um, sample programs and we've listed them on our website and on this database. For example, this is a Argentina program. As you see, we selected the country Argentina. Um, this, the partner institution, we left it blank so that we can see all the universities um, that are available in Argentina. So you click enter and you will see the university on the left. Then you have course titles. So you see you have human rights, pop culture, tango, and Argentinian identity. These, and we also tell you which requirement these courses fulfill for the IDS major in this case. We have the same databases for global health, international studies, and global studies. We also have a link right next to each course for um, where you can see the course description. So once you find these course descriptions, you will send uh, to our office for pre-approval. And that will be step three. Next slide. So um, one thing to remember uh, when you plan, you're planning your summer travel abroad uh, is that at least six upper division courses from your ma major have to be taken at UCLA. Anything beyond that you can take abroad. So, but you're not restricted only to, uh, to taking courses for the major. You can just take go do study abroad um, just to develop some other interests. Uh, just uh, make uh, remember that any courses you take abroad will be calculated into your, your UCLA GPA. Um, uh, uh, you can take courses, if you want to apply courses, uh, abroad courses to your major, then you need to 
choose those courses that focus on international development or global studies or international studies. Um, and they can come from any departments like sociology, anthropology, art history, um, just because our majors uh, are interdepartmental. Um, so any topic that relates to your focus of study uh, can be applied uh, to the major. Uh, core courses, though, have to cover the same material as UCLA courses. And next slide. And um, so if you decide uh, which courses you're going to, you would like to take, you, uh, Sandy mentioned the course description, you need to send us the course description and uh, we can let you know at that time whether this course can be applied to your major or not. So just to give you a general idea. To finalize um, the approval, you will need to send us the course syllabus um, to, so that we can just confirm the course. And um, uh, so we advise students who go to, uh, to, to study abroad programs that they keep the syllabi. And I know that some courses, some universities do not provide syllabi, but then you will need to talk with Sandy or myself. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy and Magda. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about UCLA travel study programs. Um, these are three to five week summer only programs with UCLA professors. Applications open November 18th, and the program fees will be updated on our website in November. Um, like I mentioned, if you haven't already taken a look at the travel study webinar in the beginning of the week, please do so on our on demand sessions on our website. Okay, first up is our Global Studies Paris program taught by Professor Ali Badad. This is a, a summer program, and this program explores the questions of Americanization in France. Students are expected to have taken at least an introductory course on globalization prior to participating in this program. The coursework would be Global Studies 110A, Global France, and 110B, Culture and Multiculturalism in France. Some highlights of visits to museums and river tour and lodging in student dormita dormitory in Paris. Next up is Global Studies New York City. This program is taught by Professor Cal Rostiala. This program is designed for students interested in international diplomacy and politics in areas like human rights, development, and war crimes. This is a four-week program. Uh, the classes are global governance and international institutions and the UN system. Some highlights include visits to the UN headquarters and the UN development program office, and uh, students will be housed in NYU student dorms. Global Studies The Hague. Now, this is a new program to be taught by Professor David Kim. This program will introduce students to the history politics and governance of international human rights. This program offers students a rare opportunity to live in the global center of international human rights. Courses are uh, 110A human rights and 110B transnational actors and institutions of human rights. Some highlights include a weekend excursion to Brussels, museum visits, and visit to the UNHCR. Global Health in Peru. This program is taught by Professor Kayla Kakonda. This program helps students reach a better understanding of how diversities and disparities in, in people and places impact human health, using Peru as a case study. Uh, some highlights include the uh, one week in the Peruvian Amazon, visits to rural and urban public health establishments, including NGOs and clinics, and a trip to a manatee rescue. Some of the courses, uh, the two courses that are required are global health and practice and diversities and disparities. Global Health and Medicine, East-West Medicine. This program is taught by Professor Wei Jun and designed with pre-health, medical, nursing, and public health students in mind. This is a four-week program in Shanghai, China, and some highlights include developing a personal health plan with traditional techniques, Tai Chi lessons, guided visits to hospitals and clinics, workshops on practices uh, such as acupuncture. Uh, 
Uh, I would like to mention that all of these programs are listed on our website in greater detail because we are limited on time. I won't be able to go um, to too much detail on all of them, but please check out our website for more detail. And then next up, we have the International Area Studies Asia program. Uh, this is going to be virtual only and taught by Professor Bob McCann. Um, details are still being finalized on what exactly the virtual uh, program would look like. However, we hope to have everything updated by the registration launch of November 18th. This uh, course will focus on strategic business communication and business leadership, leadership across Asia. We plan to have virtual excursions to relevant cultural sites in Asia with guided tours, as well as virtual company visits as well. And lastly, we have our new global internship program. A few of the locations are listed here, such as Colombia, Ireland, and the UK. This is a, a summer program with eight weeks on site. Virtual options are also available worldwide. And one of the requirements would be uh, intern the internship course, IA Studies 195 CE. And this uh, registration actually opens November 2nd, so coming up on Monday. And the deposit would be $200 to hold your spot. If you have any further questions or want to learn more about uh, the Global Internship Program, please email Andrew Bottom in our office. Uh, the contact information can be found on our website as well. There are dozens of other options for students through UCAAP. These were just a few travel study examples that we wanted to highlight. Okay, and this would be our uh, email newsletter. If you wanna sign up to receive study abroad program updates and communications, um, please use the QR code here to sign you up and we will keep you updated um, with program updates um, throughout the quarter. This is our contact uh, information. We do have drop-in advising and one-on-one -on -one advising um, for students. Please go to ieo.ucla.edu slash contact uh, to make an appointment. Okay, and that concludes this webinar. Uh, we have about 10 minutes of questions, so please feel free to use the Q&A function uh, box to submit any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you all for joining us today, and we look forward to you joining our programs. Okay, so our first question is, do we have to put down a deposit in order to apply for a program? So yes, so for our travel study programs, there will be a deposit um, and usually we do not um, require, we do not allow students to apply for more than one program due to um, some programs may be impacted. However, if you email us, sometimes we can make it work, but it just kind of depends on the type of programs that you're interested in applying in. I believe this, the deposit for the travel study programs will be $200. And if you go to our uh, travel study webinar, um, it will list the exact amount and when everything would be due. Someone said, wait, can I see the page for signing up for emails? Yes, let me go back to that right now. Okay, I was interested in the International and Area Studies Asia program. Oh, study in Hong Kong. Okay, do you think it will be offered in person during summer 2022? Um, that is hard to say at this moment. Um, we don't know if we'll be returning to Hong Kong. Um, so we'll have to ch check in next year to see if that would be possible. Um, so it, it changes year to year, unfortunately. I'm sorry, I can't give you a yes or no answer on that right now. When will dates and prices be announced for the Peru Travel Study Program? So in November. So the launch, like I mentioned, would be uh, November 18th. That's when our program's uh, registration opens. So we will have everything updated 
about one to two weeks before that. So it's coming up in November. So please look out within the next uh, week or two. How will study abroad programs be impacted by COVID-19? So we'll, uh, it's a good question. So we will be making decisions um, early January or February if programs are not permitted to run due to COVID. Um, right now we are still planning like everything will be running as normal. So we will update you if any changes um, you know, impact some programs. Okay, I believe this would be a question for Sandy or Magda. Uh, there is a you said there is a requirement that you have to take six major courses at UCLA. Is there a similar requirement for minor courses? Sandy and Magda, do you wanna take that one? Sure, Magda, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's no minimum requirement for minors. No, unless, for not for our minors. Some minors no. at UCLA may have some restrictions, but our minors do not. Okay, are there study abroad opportunities like these available for grad students? I, I can say something <laughs> if I may. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so uh, in the summer travel actually is open to all students, even to graduate students. And in the past, we did have students who went to Hong Kong, pro graduate students who went to Hong Kong program. So, so they are available. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think you would be taking those, you will be uh, able to apply those courses to your graduate degree. So you would have to check basically with your graduate program, whether those courses that are offered um, are, uh, can be applied to your degree. Great. Um, next question. Um, if we take the global health program in Peru or Shanghai, will both courses taken be eligible to, to be applied for the global health minor? Um, yes. So both, uh, um, both programs offer two upper division courses. Both of those courses can be applied to the global health minor. There was one question, um, Maureen, about whether or not our travel study programs generally cheaper than UCAP. Oh yes, I was typing an answer to that one. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. yeah, no, no, you're fine. Um, so it depends on the program. Um, I think the best solution would be to email our office for an advising session and they can kind of tell you the comparison between travel study programs and EAP programs. Um, it really just depends on the type of experience that you're looking for. I know for global studies, students, um, and Sandy and Magda can speak to this, but uh, travel study programs are required, I believe, for global study students. Um, mm -hmm. So usually, you know, that would be the case for those types of students, right? Uh, yeah, for travel study, for global studies, they're required. Um, and generally, I guess, depending, some travel study programs are cheaper than others, depending on location. So we know, for example, the New York program sometimes tends to be a little maybe more expensive uh, because it's New York. Whereas let's say, I don't know about the Lima program might be a little less expensive because it's in a, in a different, so it depends on the location as well. Yes, definitely. Um, you know, Paris for instance, would be probably more expensive um, in some cases. And uh, I would like to mention that the virtual program would be less expensive because we're not taking into account, of course, housing costs on the ground and airfare and things like that. So if cost is a um, you know, hindrance, please look out for that program as well. It Are there some courses that can be applied for linguistic majors? It's a good question. <laughs> uh, Sandy Magnet, do you happen to know? From travel study programs, uh, from our programs, no, a lot of our programs, like our Shanghai program, it was approved for anthropology. Our Paris program was approved for comparative literature and from French major. Uh, and uh, New York Global Studies approved for IDS. But for linguistic majors, I don't know of any travel study programs, maybe some EAP programs, you will have to ask your linguistics um, counselor, they might have an idea of which 
programs are, av are available for linguistics. Yeah, and like I mentioned, please drop in um, in one of our advising sessions. They'll be able to kind of uh, tell you maybe which programs are eligible for you. Um, so please do that wh whenever you have a chance. And someone asked, um, where will be the recorded version of this webinar in the future? So on our on-demand sessions of our GLOW page on our website, um, it will link you to our uh, YouTube Premier uh, IEO um, page and all the uh, webinars from the week will be listed there for, for your view. Okay, just reading some questions here. Where can we find more information about the intern research positions abroad that were mentioned in the beginning slide? Are these the travel study programs? So no. So the internship program is a completely separate program uh, than travel study. You can go ahead and go on our website on ieo.ucla.edu and you'll see an, under explore programs, it would be called the global internship uh, program. You can also speak to or email um, Andrew Bottom in our office and he'll be able to tell you extensively what that program is about. Maureen, there is also a question about out-of-state tuition. Um, so uh, I believe there is a one price uh, for everybody for um, summer travel, but I'm not sure about UCEP, how that works. Yeah, I'm unsure about that specific question. Um, if you can email our office, they'll be able to assist you with that, uh, the out-of-state tuition question. Unfortunately, I don't, I'm not really sure. Okay, we have a few minutes if anyone wants to keep sending in questions. And for the internship, um, I know the question about the uh, internship abroad, we will be having a, um, or IEO will be having another workshop um, about that. Um, that would be the 16th, uh, the week of the 16th, um, November 18th will be, um, I'm sorry, what date is that? Is on that week? Yes, um, November 17th. Um, the Global Internships Info Session will take place at 4 p.m. So probably that's going to be also on IEO website, but if you're interested in learning more, that will be, um, again, the 17th of November. And we will be sending information about that on our weekly bulletin for those of you who are interested. Great. And I actually was able to uh, confirm about the out-of-state uh, tuition question with a colleague. Um, so no, not for us. So for travel study programs, it does not apply. So out-of-state and in-state pay the same? Yes. For yeah. travel study programs, yes. Yeah. But for EAP, it's for not. For EAP, yeah. I'm not sure. And for EAP, I don't believe out of state um, is affected uh, in the summer, but again, just uh, email our office and uh, they'll be able to confirm that. But for travel study, it does not apply. Okay. okay, I think that's it for questions. I don't see any more coming in. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Um, please take a look at some of our other sessions today. And if you uh, want to watch any of the other webinars, go ahead and uh, you can check them out on our on-demand session of our uh, GLOW page on our website. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy and Magda. <laughs> thank you, Maureen. Mm -hmm.